Hi everyone, I'm Karina Devi. Let's talk about the art of holding space. And as a teacher, this is one of the most beautiful aspects to me is knowing that the space that I am holding for people to have an experience is one that can allow their experience to unfold as truthfully and beautifully and lovingly as it possibly can. And so as teachers, we have to know that how we are showing up and what we are bringing into the room, both physically, environmentally speaking, the, the sounds, the objects, the colors, the, the things that we might bring in to enhance a space have a real effect, as well as the unseen things, our emotions, our energy, our intentions, um, our beliefs about ourselves, about what we're teaching, about our students, they all have a felt and experienced impact. So we wanna be really intentional as we are preparing to hold space for people. And so first, what does it mean to hold space? I think this is a question that we all have to answer ourselves. And for me, personally, it's that I am stepping back from my personality. I'm stepping back from things that people may know about me or what I may have presented of myself. I am stepping back and allowing my heart and soul to speak. And that is the part of me that knows when to offer a little bit of guidance or uh, an invitation into a certain direction or another. And it's the part that knows also to be still and to be quiet and to just allow whatever's happening to unfold in the way it does. And so one way that that can look is, let's say I'm teaching a yoga class and we're toward the end and I have these, these three poses planned out and I think they're, they're so perfect to do one right after another. And so we're in that first pose of this sequence and I'm thinking like, okay, it's been a couple minutes, we should probably move into the next pose now because you know the, the class is about to end. That is my personality and my mind and my ego that's trying to stick to a plan. But if I'm present and I'm in my heart and I'm grounded and I'm listening and I'm feeling and sensing, then I might perceive that actually it might be a little disruptive to move to anything else right now. And that maybe what that room needs right now is just silence and allowing. Maybe there's this, this process that's blooming and I'm watching people's bodies soften more and I'm hearing their breaths get deeper and I'm hearing more of these long, drawn out, relieving sighs. People are having an experience that I don't want to interrupt. So I'm gonna let my my ego self step out of the way and my soul self lead. So in order for us to be able to have that experience as teachers, to be able to have presence and clarity when we are with our students, we have to prepare ourselves in some way. And I think that this changes all the time depending on what's going on in our lives and what is um, how comfortable we are with teaching um, but we want to consider what we need ahead of time. I know that it doesn't serve anyone. It doesn't serve my own clarity and it doesn't serve the experience of my students. If I go straight from dropping an emotional toddler off at daycare to five minutes later walking in the door and greeting students, right? I'm going to be carrying some residue of stress, of transition, um, and people are going to feel that. You know, whether they're even consciously aware of it or not, energy is contagious. It is felt, especially when walking into a new space where we're having an experience that requires so much sensing from us. So instead of having an experience like that, I know that I need to put some things in place so that in this example, I'm having something that maybe is a little bit of a stressful experience and then I'm giving myself time and space between dropping my son off at daycare and then getting to the place where I'm teaching. And so between 
dropping him off or um, you know ending another um, bit of work or you know whatever it is that you're doing before teaching and actually entering the space where you're going to begin the class or I should say beginning the class you want to allow a process to happen for yourself and we're all different and for some of us we like to have a specific ritual like okay I do 10 minutes of journaling and then I do 10 minutes of yoga and then 10 minutes of meditation or for some of us we just need a little time and we'll move through it in whatever way we need to so find what works for you but there's a few components to preparing to teach that we want to be mindful of one is releasing we want to release whatever we're carrying in that might affect the energy of the room, the emotional or nervous system experience of our students. We have to keep in mind that as teachers, we are the master regulators of the room, or we really want to be. We want to be holding a space of, of calm, of clarity, of groundedness, of openness. And we can't do that if we're, if our energy is still back in an experience that we had earlier that day, whether it was like an upsetting thing happened in traffic, someone cut you off and, and it like brought up a lot of anger in you, or you had an argument with your partner or, you know, anything like that. We want to find a way to release that so that you're not carrying that in to the room in such a um, visceral way. So there's lots of ways to do that, to release. Tapping is one, journaling, moving, um, going for a run. I mean, there's so many ways to release. So find some way to let go of anything heavy or fiery that you might be carrying that doesn't have a place in what you're teaching. And then we also want to find a way to connect with how do I want my students to feel? today? How do I want them to feel while they're in this room? How do I want them to feel when they leave? And it might be a little different for each class depending on what you're teaching, but probably there's going to be an overarching theme and maybe it includes um, feeling welcomed, feeling accepted for who they are. Um, it should include them feeling safe. And maybe it also includes them feeling inspired or connected to joy or connected to the earth. Um, and so it, it really depends on your style of teaching and what you like to bring forth. But you wanna take a moment to connect to that yourself. So for me personally, I like to set an intention before I teach and I do this while I'm driving. And so while I'm driving, I'm kind of in this like, <clears throat> excuse me, like praying, intention setting sort of mixture mode where I'm, I'm sort of calling in a certain opening that I can carry into the room, that can fill the room, and that students can tap into if they so choose. Does that make sense? So for example, um, I always ask that students feel safe, welcomed, loved for exactly who they are, and that they can have whatever experience they need to in that class and that whatever I, whatever comes out of my mouth is what they need to hear or is something that's supportive for them. And I don't plan 99.9% .9 of my classes because I like to just feel what's wanting to come through me and I trust that, but I could not do that for a long time when I started teaching. I needed something to like really go off of and reference in case I got nervous or I forgot like, oh gosh, what pose comes well after Warrior Two? I don't remember. Um, but now there's, there's a little more freedom to move and to just kind of respond to what is happening in the moment. So just to kind of recap a little bit, in order to prepare to hold space for our students, in a way that feels safe, that feels loving, we need to allow ourselves to be present with them and to be connected with what we want them to experience as well. So in order to do that, we probably need to let go of anything we're carrying that might be heavy or intense as much as we can. And 
And then we also want to connect to what, what is that intention? What do we want to bring? What are we trying to offer? Um, also with the, the ability to just let go and know that they're going to have their own experience and that we can't force anyone to feel anything. We can only invite. So another component to this, to holding space is setting up your space is what do you, what's in your environment where you're teaching? And we want to choose our environment and what we bring into our environment based on that experience we want students to have. So if I'm teaching a like really high energy, like Saturday morning um, funk yoga flow, I'm not going to set up the room the same way that I would teach a Sunday night candlelit yin yoga and yoga nidra class, <laughs> right? They're going to be totally different. In the first one, I'm probably going to have the lights on. I'm probably going to have music like bumping and playing when people walk in so that they're already like kind of getting into this sort of, um, you know, party sort of atmosphere. Um, I might have like a Bluetooth speaker that has changing lights and colors. Um, I might have something fun like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's a way that we can set things up so when people walk into the room, they already kind of know what sort of experience they're in for. And then for a candlelight yin class, right, I'm gonna have the lights low. If I have any music playing, it's gonna be really soft and meditative and deep. I'm going to be speaking probably very softly and warmly um, and there's there's going to be a difference not only in the atmosphere in the sounds people are hearing in the brightness and colors they're seeing but also in just the energy just the feeling of the room is going to be different and you know truthfully we really don't need to do anything to set up in order to to support an experience because a space is a space and we can have any kind of experience anywhere. I've taught classes in public parks surrounded by people and in, um, you know, classrooms with fluorescent lights overhead and people yelling in the hallways and, and you can still have really beautiful experiences wherever you are. Um, but you want to consider that everything you bring into that room or anything you take out of that room, it all has an impact. So be mindful of your environment. And then the last component of holding space that I wanna talk about is how we interact with our students because the, the language that we use and the way that we respond to their questions, to their um, their complaints to to everything it has a very direct impact and we have to understand that when people are going into an environment for yoga for mindfulness especially with a little more repetition let's say it's a class that they're coming to every week they're they start to shed some of the layers some of their armor that they might carry around in their waking life or in other classes because when we are teaching mindfulness meditation yoga we're inviting people into a deeper place in themselves than they usually get to go then they're usually invited to go in a lot of settings and so we have to show up in a way that supports that that supports them feeling safe to do that and that encourages them that if they want to to go deeper right so Let's say you have, um, you just did a mindfulness exercise with people. Maybe you led a meditation and now you're going around the room and you're asking people what they thought, what, what kind of experience they had. And I, you know, I know this is like a no brainer probably, but we want to be really receptive to what people are saying. We want to be really validating of their experience and just make them feel safe that it's okay for them to share we want to hear their opinion no matter how different or interesting or nuanced it may be um, and that we're, we're meeting them with the same openness that they are coming to us with. 
um, and that this is this is part of their experience whether we're in a sharing circle or they're first coming in and dropping their st stuff off you know looking at them and smiling when they walk into the door or just acknowledging them and giving them a little wave or um, you know making sure to say goodbye to people just helping people feel welcome you know them coming into your classroom is like them coming into your home and you want them to feel like they're you want them there and I personally struggle with this a little bit because when I'm teaching or I'm preparing to teach I can like go so deep into my own little space <laughs> that sometimes I'm like oh there's people walking into the room I should like come out of my meditation and like hi hey, everybody <laughs> And if you are someone who is wanting to teach, um, you know, for like you're wanting to charge for classes or something like that, that one-on-one -on -one interaction, that personability is going to be one of your biggest like class card sellers, one of your biggest ticket sellers is people knowing, people being able to say, I love being in their presence. I feel so good with them. I feel like I can be myself. I feel like I'm celebrated there, right? We really want people to feel that way because when people feel accepted for who they are, they feel loved, they feel seen, heard, and understood, they can go so deep. What we are teaching, mindfulness, meditation, yoga, it has the ability to be able to it has the ability to heal in many ways. It has the ability to open us, to deepen us. And we can't force that on anybody. We don't wanna force it on anybody. But in order for that to be available, people have to feel safe and loved and accepted. And just by loving, accepting, seeing, understanding, welcoming, allowing, not judging, the people that come in to share space with you, you are already giving them such a beautiful gift because there aren't a lot of places in the world where that's true. So know that you hold a lot of power in that room that you're teaching in and you can do so much good. You can have such a beautiful impact just by coming with your heart open coming without any connections to past or future, just here in the present moment with this student. Holding the whole room in your presence and feeling. And really, I really encourage you to practice opening and feeling, feeling the room around you, expanding your proprioception, because those will be some of your greatest strengths in teaching these topics. So. I hope this is helpful and I look forward to our discussion and we'll see you soon.